The following takes place between May 1st and May 30th. Oh my God, I have this gig in one month where I have to write a whole new speech. I'm, oh, pretty much freaking out. Um, but I'm going to follow my formula and I have one month to put this together. So I'm going to start off with, uh, first of all, I got to get my title. Then I'm going to get uh, my, what is the problem? I'm going to get my core premise, the action steps, find my heart story and the call to action. And I'm just going to follow my formula, get on, just put it together. Three days and I've done nothing but procrastinate. But procrastinate takes, you know, a lot of effort. I've gotten a lot done. I've um, emptied my entire email inbox. I've updated my profile picture on Facebook. And then I, of course, I had to tweet about updating my profile picture on Facebook. And I have alphabetized my spice rack. But my speech, I've done nothing. Today, the Speaker Bureau informed me that the client needs the title of the speech and a short description, and they need it today. Yipes! Well, I got my title, which is a great start, so now I know what I'm going to be speaking about. I found my title by calling up the client and discussing the needs of the people in the audience. What's going on with them? What hardships do they have? What is their problem and their problem is that that they are very stressed economics are bad there's been budget cutbacks their salary has been cut uh, they have a work overload and they're surrounded by people who don't seem to understand what they're saying so i really want to empower these people because these are the people who ask everybody else what they want and that's when i got what the title of my speech is it's getting what you want and then i want to get three things so from Calling up people, doing my research was invaluable because it really helped me get the title. Getting what you want when you're fat, broke, and surrounded by idiots. <laughs> now I just need the speech. Yipes. So I had the whole day. <laughs> Shut up. So I had the whole day to write the, the uh, speech and um, I didn't do anything. I guess because I had the whole day, I kept delaying when I was going to do it. And I figured I can always do it later. And I kept looking in the refrigerator all day. Like, I've never eaten so much in my life. Like, there are ideas in the refrigerator. I don't know. I'm thinking of canceling the gig. I mean, I can't let the speaker bureau down, though. I, I could get sick a couple days beforehand. I... I'm really freaked out. I don't know what I'm going to do. All right. Today, I, I've i just had a whole attitude shift. I am not going to let fear run me. I'm going to follow the, the, the formula that I've created. I'm just going to follow exactly, get into the structure. I'm going to start with the problem because my title of my speech is Getting What You Want When You're Fat, Broke, and Surrounded by Idiots. So I'm going to start with the, the whole thing that people don't get what they want because they want to be thin, they want to be rich, and they want to be appreciated. I've decided to take my own advice, and I have asked one of my speaker friends to help me with my speech, and it's already worked. I'm meeting with her tomorrow, and just the idea that I have that in my calendar is I've written out all my notes, and um, a lot of them, but it's something, and I'm now getting excited to show her what I've got. Well, I met with Mimi, and that was so helpful, um, having someone in front of me listen to me and give me some encouragement. Uh, we worked out what the problem is, that people are fat, people don't have money, and people are surrounded by idiots, and I got some funny things happening with that. Uh, we worked out a uh, core premise. I'm not crazy about it. It's not very specific, but still, I'm just going to keep moving forward. I got action steps, way too many of them. And a lot of them are kind of new agey. I'm not happy with them at all. I don't like them. But um, I just got to keep moving forward and get to the end of the speech. 
Today, I bought these cork strips and I put them up on my office wall and that way I can see all my index cards all at once and I can walk through my speech and talk through it as I look at my index cards and then change them as, as I see fit. So this has been really helpful to me, although I am still looking and seeing maybe in between the cards or will the cards give me any idea of really how to express exactly what my core premise is and what's my heart story and what are these darn action steps? Oh, I'm going to start praying. I've added another tool to my toolbox on how to write a speech. I've got a speech writing buddy. Well, actually, she's working on stand-up. I'm working on a speech. Um, and we have been Skyping each other. So Skype has become so valuable. And it's great because I've got a recorder. I can record the sessions just like I do with my students. So this is very helpful because I've written the speech seriously. And now I'm going over with Deidre exactly where I can add the jokes. Oh, I'm getting really aggravated now, really aggravated. I still don't have components I really need. I feel the pressure of the speech coming up. And I can't read my handwriting on these index cards. Oh, um, it's, it's, it's midnight right now, and I'm just so excited because I went to sleep, and then I woke up with, with this great idea that I've been missing that women ask for what they want differently than the way men ask for what they want. And, and then it came to me this whole funny act out about how the sperm goes to the egg and it's very directed and I know what I want and I'm going to get there and I want to beat everybody else getting there. And the egg, egg doesn't choose. It just sits there waiting for the fastest swimmer. And if and that's maybe how life starts, but it's not how life has to end. And women need to say out loud what it is they want. And I'm so excited. I, I, I think this is a distinction that I missed. And there's a lot of humor, gender differences. I can bring that into my speech. This is going to be good. It's part of the problem. Um, and then please... Please, please give me my core premise. Give me my heart story. Give me my action steps. But the first part of the speech is, 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 is really kicking. Okay, I'm freaked out. I, the speech is coming up really quickly, and I still don't have my um, action steps, nor do I have my heart story. So what I'm going to do... In, <laughs> I'm getting like spiritual here is I'm going to put a note under my pillow tonight and just when I wake up please please give me my my answer you know how do I relate to this problem what in my life correlates with the problem I'm talking about and and then what step once I have that I know I'll have the action steps okay I woke up this morning and um no there's no answer I put the question under my pillow. Nope, nothing, nothing. I still don't have a heart story. I guess God is a little too busy with other supposedly important things. Um, I know what I'm going to do. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got my core premise. I got my heart story. I got the action steps. And when did I get it? 5 a.m. on my way to go to the bathroom, it just hit me. The, I thought of the episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza, nothing's going right in his life. He doesn't get what he wants. And the waitress comes over and says, what would you like to order? The same thing? And he goes, no, ordering the same thing has never worked for me. I'm going to do something different. And he orders something different. And then he starts doing everything. It's called the opposite. He does everything the opposite of what he usually does. And his life transforms. And that reminded me of a time in my life where I was so down, where I realized that everything that I've done in my life has brought me to this point of feeling depressed and unhappy. And that's when I realized that if I wanted to get different results, I'd have to do something different. Duh! I could do that heart story and go into the detail of that point in my life and what happened after that because that all led to me writing my book and being on Oprah and it just started with me doing something different. And that's the action step. 
is if you don't like what you've got, then try something different. And I could tell my story. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so now I've got my, my heart story. And uh, now I can go back and fix up the problem because now I'm totally in the speech. I wasn't really in the speech until I got my heart story because now I can really relate to what I'm saying because I identify and I put myself in touch with that time in my life when I was totally broke, where I didn't know what to do with my life. And um, I was fat and I hit bottom with a big bottom and I was alone. And so now I can go back and rework my core premise. I can rework the problem. And now I know what my action steps are because I have to look and see what action steps did I take that got me out of my, my problem. And uh, so now I, I got it. It's, it's what I did. Do something differently. Do something differently. So this is really cool. I've solved my problem. Doing something different is a, just one part of the core premise because you can't spend your whole life doing something different. You'll never get what you want. So it's three steps and I found the other two action steps. It's getting what you want, identify it, say it, get it. Sweet. Okay, for the past three days, I have been rearranging my cards, taking them down. Do I want... Do I put in a script? Do I, you know, use index cards? I, I went over to my friend Mimi's house and I and I worked with her again. And I am worried because I have not a clue how long my speech is. Um, and I think I need to do a trial run. So I got this idea. I rented a theater um, and I took some of my students who've been studying with me in my corporate workshop and invited them to come to the Hudson Theater in Hollywood. It's a little tiny theater and I'm just going to do my speech there. So I have three days to put my speech together for the Hudson Theater. So I have been working my butt off for the past three days. I feel like doing it at the Hudson Theater in front of my students is pretty much just as scary as doing it for my client. So I've been very busy putting together the PowerPoint, putting together images, putting some points in. Um, I found that the only place where people really say what they want um, is on Craigslist personal ad. So I got a really funny ad from that that I'm going to put up there. And uh, tomorrow's the day that I'm going to do it at the Hudson Theater. Wow. What a day. I did uh, my speech uh, at the theater in Hollywood for in front of some of my students and I gave them pads of paper and they wrote down all their ideas for me and I also had my friend Laura who does market research and she got me out of the room so nobody would be embarrassed to say things and she conducted a survey on what points worked and what points didn't well what did work was amazingly helpful because some of the things that I just threw away, some of my throwaway lines, like when was the last time anybody asked you what you wanted, people really um, resonated with that. So I'm going to build that up and make it more, you know, part of the speech. And uh, I'm just excited about it. I'm excited about it. I got three days before the speech and I got three days to look through everybody's notes and, uh, figure what I want to throw out and what I want to keep. But that was really valuable. Well, I am shocked to see how positive I feel about my speech. Ever since I did it in front of people, um, it feels really good. I've been taking my speech out for a walk. I've been, <laughs> my dogs are sick of hearing it. I've just been saying it over and over again. Um, I think from doing that, I'm not going to need to actually have the index cards with me on stage. I'm psyched. I can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Judy Carter. What about getting rid of the idiots in our life? How do we get rid of those people making us miserable? It's impossible, especially if they're the teenagers you gave birth to. I mean, don't we all, all us women, what do we want? We want to be appreciated. We want to be acknowledged, right? 
We want to be told how wonderful and talented we are. But what do we get when we get into the office and we hear our voicemail? Oh, you're not doing things right. You're way over budget. You're not accurate enough. You're not sensitive enough to other people's needs. And that's your husband. <laughs> then you got your clients, you got your boss. So let me ask you people, how many of you in this room have actually made some attempts, had tried to go for thin, rich, and appreciate it only to end up fat, broken, surrounded by idiots. Let's hear applause on that. So today, I want to show you how you can find happiness, how you can have what you want in spite of those things. You have the little guys swimming to the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm swimming. I'm going to get to the eggs. Wait, there are other guys swimming with me. I'm going to beat them. I'm going to even trick them. Hey, little guy, I saw an egg at the end of the cul-de-sac. Turn right. Ha! <laughs> I'm swimming. Uh-oh, there's a fast one next to me. Oh, my God. It's Michael Phelps, a little swimmer. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Michael, here. Ha! <laughs> I'm getting to the egg. And let me tell you some tips on how you can go out and get what you want. And it's very simple. You just have to know what you want, say what you want, and take some action and go out and get it. My mother was so overwhelmed with her life that I made a decision when I was probably a little girl. And I said, I want to make her happy. I want to make her happy. And then she died suddenly. In my late 20s, my mother got this rare blood thing. And, she, and it was 24 hours she was just dead. Actually, we think she died from stress, but she died. And then I was doing my jobs, and all of a sudden, this sense of emptiness over overwhelmed me because I had nobody to call afterwards. I'd do a show, and I'd go to, and there was no one there. Let me know what you try different. Let me know how that affects your life. And maybe in closing, the one thing that you want to try differently is to get some time alone. Take a breath, and if you get very still, you will hear that little voice inside of you. And that voice knows exactly what it is you want. And if you get really quiet, you might find out that after taking this journey to find out what you want, that you might have what you really want. Because when you get really quiet, you will know that you are all so loved. Thank you all.